So on the matter of this t the title of this YouTube, The Sovereignty of God and Man in an individual solution, salvation unto eternal life. God has infinite sovereignty. Man has finite. On the other hand, God never violates the volition of man. He may draw you, try to persuade you, provide all men enough information about God himself as creator, and as you seek more, you get more. But he's not going to impose his will upon you. Unbeknownst to most Calvinists. He doesn't force you to become a born-again child of God. And by that dint of that change within you, enable you to believe. You're already enabled to choose to believe. But all mankind is dead set against believing. Their volition is dead set against. That's their that's their problem. Because of the sin nature. For whatever reason you have to not choose to believe. Whatever you have reason for you have to be against God. It varies from the individual. Lots of similarity. But nevertheless, God doesn't wait to see what you're going to do. He chooses that you will choose of your own volition to do what you do. Believe or not believe. When you believe, he already chose you to believe. When you don't believe, he didn't choose you to believe. You're on your own. He doesn't draw you then. He draws the elect. Persuades them. Somehow a special drawing, without violating the volition of man, doesn't force you to become a born-again child of God, and then you choose thereby what the mechanics that he put in you, like you're a robot. That's not the issue. Matter of fact, when uh, John, let's take a look at John 1, 12 to 13, which settles that problem, because I know this is going to come up. So I'm hitting it ahead of time. But as many as received him, see, he came to his own, and those who were his own did not receive him. They just did not choose to believe. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believed on his name. So, who were not born out of, who were not born, not of the blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but born of God. Second birth. Born from above. So as many as received him, that is to say, that believed in his name, became children of God, born of God. So first, you receive Christ. Right? Second, then, thereby, as a result, you have the right to become children of God, born of God, born of God from above. The order of that is not the way the Calvinists say you're, you're born of God first and then you choose to believe. That's not the issue right here or anywhere else in, in the Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, whosoever believes in him should never perish, but have everlasting life. So first you believe and then you have eternal life. Thereby, because it says in John chapter 3, pre previous to this, in 3, uh, 3, 3 to, uh, 4 and 5, it says, uh, you have become born of God. In John 3, 16, just take, take a look at John 3, 16. Same thing. See how one verse corroborates and never contradicts another. <clears throat> For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten and one and only son that whoever believes in him. So he chooses to believe first, shall not perish, but then chooses to have eternal life. Well, when you have eternal life, what are you? Truly I say to you, truly, truly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God, the eternal life, eternal kingdom of God. So you're born of water, you see. So... In order to do that, you have to choose to believe first. Go down to John 3, 16 and 17, 18. He who believes in him is not judged, not condemned. Now you have eternal life. He who does not believe has been judged already condemned. Not done, is not going to go to, to uh, heaven yet, because he has not yet believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. 
you see. So you have to choose to believe. Then, if he has not believed, choose to believe, then you're not judged. You're not condemned. You have eternal life. See how that works? Calvinism, you're wrong. So let's go down to point six. I have to fix this in the, in the study. Only those who are given by the Father to the Son will come to the Son. Again, the sovereignty of both. The sovereignty of God, the Father, has given a certain number of those humans, individuals, to the Son. And those will come by faith to the Son. John 6, 37, 44, 65. All that the Father gives me, Jesus said, will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. Obviously, they will have eternal life. Those who are given by the Father to the Son will then come to the Son, i.e., believe in Him and be saved. I would say unto eternal life. Different kinds of saved. This one is unto eternal life. I'm the bread of life, eternal life. Note that the Father is sovereign in His choice of whom to give to the Son, not depending upon the will of man. Yet, all those who choose to believe will choose of their own volition to believe and have been chosen by God to believe. And all those who have not chosen to believe, they have their own choice. They're not forced to either way. And they have not been chosen to believe. God's sovereignty prevails, yet man's volition is never violated. Since not all men will be saved, then only some will be chosen to be given by the Father to the Son, i.e., only some are elect and will be saved. I can make this point seven now. I'm going to fix this. didn't realize we had two fives. And no one can come to the Son unless the Father draws and enables him. Let's look at that. John 6, 44 and 65. No one can come to me, by faith, of course, unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. Here Jesus went on to say, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled him. So there's an enabling. Yet, the volition is not violated, because why would God say, Anyone who comes to me by faith has eternal life. No, only one I make come to me. No, he doesn't say that. So here's my comment on these two verses, 44 and 65 of John 6. If all individuals, elect and non-elect, are drawn and enabled by the, Father to, by the Father to the Son to be saved, then our Lord's statement in verse 44, no one can come to me unless our Father, the Father who sent me draws him, uh, verse 65, enabled, would be redundant. But this is not the case. One must draw the conclusion here that only those who are to be raised up on the last day are drawn and enabled by the Father, i.e. only those who are elect are drawn and enabled. We have to look into those two words, drawn and enabled. So since not all men will be saved, and since only those, only all of those, who are drawn and enabled by the Father to come to Christ will come to, to Christ of their own volition, then not all men will be drawn and enabled by the Father to be saved. Just take a look at this other problem, which we have to resolve immediately. We face it. John 12, 32. <clears throat> But I, Jesus Christ, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. Uh-oh. There's that word draw again. The context is slightly different. Think about it. Just think about the difference in the context. Jesus said that all at the cross, he would draw all men to himself. He did not mean everybody will be saved or drawn by the Father to the Son, for he made it clear that some will be lost. John 5, 28 to 29. 
if the drawing by the son is the same as that of the father, it means he will draw indiscriminately, i.e. not just one kind of men, but draw from the entire population of men. Those saved will include not only Jews, but also those from every tribe, language, people, and nation. Bob Wilkin. He answers in a, an article in his GES, Grace Evangelical Society, news uh, uh, magazine. If I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. John 12, 32. Almost naturally refers to all people, each and every one, including the non-elect. In John 12, John 16, 9 to 11, Jesus said that the Holy Spirit would convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. That is the same world as in John 3.16, for God so loved the world. Christ died for all, John 3.16, 1 John 2, 2. And all are being drawn by God to him. Look at 1 John 2, 2. For he is the propitiation, satisfactory payment for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. You see, not for ours only, not for believers only, but the sins of the whole world. So everybody is included in it. John 1, 2, 2. And he himself is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for those of the whole world. You Calvinists, you can't re read into this. You just have to read from it. And all are being drawn by God to him. So God is drawing both the elect and the non-elect to himself. This can easily be seen from the Gospels. Judas was surely drawn to Christ in a very intense way. That is why his guilt is so great. The nation of Israel is being drawn. Jesus said that the guilt of those in Chorazin and Bethsaida would be greater than that of those from ancient Tyre and Sidon because they had rejected the greater light. That's Luke 10, 13 to 16. Indeed, Jesus indicted the whole generation for rejecting one greater than Solomon and Jonah. So John 10, 16. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. Leon Morris says on this, and in his gospel according to John, his commentary, men like to feel independent. They think that they come, or that they can come to Jesus entirely of their own volition. Jesus assures us that this is an utter impossibility. No man, no man at all, can come unless the Father draws him, unless the Father gives him to the Son, and unless the Father enables him. Tell you the truth, the volition, the following passage indicates that there are those who will go to the destruction, denying the Lord who brought them out of that destruction, thus indicating that the Father must indeed draw men unto himself in order for them to be saved. I must correct this. The choice of an individual to believe is of the individual's volition. Nevertheless, the individual's volition without God's drawing will inevitably, inevitably be to choose not to believe. Man, man is, is uh, irretrievably, without 